Hi, I'm Sharice Powell. And I'm Noah Russell. Welcome to this week's edition of IE News. We have a great show ready for you today, so stay tuned as we take a look into one of the hottest pop culture feuds of the decade. I share my report on our very own Long Beach City College men and women's basketball season. And I'll be taking an inside look into the award-winning Viking newspaper and their exciting new update. Stay tuned as we sit down with Professor Greg Mortensen of the Performing Arts Department and discuss the upcoming drama, The Great White Hope. All that and more on this edition of IE News. Now for our first story, Kanye and Taylor are always feuding. Teresa Pell updates us all on the hottest celebrity gossip deets on today's entertainment report. Kanye West and Taylor Swift are back at it again. Famous, a song West recently released, has received flack from Taylor Swift fans because West claims that he was responsible for her fame. Taylor is usually pretty quiet and rarely responds to anything she may consider as an ignorant comment. However, Swift and West have had their trouble in the past. Swift refused to be his doormat this time and threw shade at West during the 2016 Grammy Award ceremony. West claims to have called Swift and asked for her permission to allow him to mention her in his new song, Famous. West states, I said, look, Taylor, I talked to my wife about it and I said, how do you feel about this line? I was like, Taylor, you and me might still smash. And she was like, oh, Kanye, I like that line. Kanye addressed Swift's Grammy response and stated, then she won and said something completely different. She ain't cool no more. She had two seconds to be cool and she messed up. Wes and Swift have been butting heads since 2009. It's 2016. Kanye, apologize to Taylor. Taylor, let it go. Move on with your life. Chrissy Teigen and John Legend are going to have their first child. Teigen and Legend are having a baby girl and did not conceive her by chance. Teigen underwent IVF and had been very candid about it in an interview with People Magazine. Teigen stated, I've made the decision not only am I having a girl, but I picked the girl from her little embryo. I picked her and was like, let's put in the girl. Teigen stated that she feels as though Legend would be a great father to a daughter and has been very open about her infertility issues. She stated that she is always happy and open to speak on infertility. The more casual, the better, and she doesn't mind. Congratulations to Teigen and Legend on their little girl. David Bowie passing was not only unexpected, but shocking. However, his spirit lived on at the 2016 Grammy Awards show. Lady Gaga performed a moving tribute to the rock icon who died at the age of 69. Bowie received two Grammy Awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award during his five decade long career. To honor Bowie, Gaga walked the red carpet as Bowie's alter ego, Ziggy Stardust. She wore an orange wig, a leotard, a bedazzled Marc Jacobs blazer, and platform heels. Gaga performed a few of Bowie's songs such as Space Oddity, Fashion, and Let's Dance, and closed her performance with Heroes. I am Sharice Appel here at IE News with your entertainment report. Wow, that was some hot gossip. Thanks, Teresa. Now who's ready to find out which rock songs of today are hitting the charts as Brent takes you through our music top 10. Hi, I'm DJ Drake, and you can catch me at KCTY 3 p.m. with DJ Shannon Mac on Mondays. We talk about what we want, but, for, and, but now we're going to talk about the top 10 hard rock and metal tracks of the year. We're starting off with number 10, which is, fo is Footsteps by Pop Evil. Very moving track, very good melodies. And it's number 9, we got Adelia's Way, Bad Reputation. This band is great. They've been, they've been a good live act. they got a great meet and greet package. Very affordable, very fun. Number 8 is Megadeth, Dystopia, for all the thinking men that love metal. Number seven, Shaman's Harvest, the cover of Dirty Diana, originally by Michael Jackson. This is a countrified rock version of it, and it's very, very good. Number six, Red Sunrise and the Other Side, using sh shadows of Alice in Chains with the voice melodies. Very, very good songs. Number five, Bear Teeth in Between, hard-hitting, in-your-face action. Very good music. Number four, Dead Sarah, Mona Lisa. Melody, lie-hearted, hard it can be whatever you want it to be, but it's a great live track. And, then, and number three, we got Broom of the Rising Throne. Throne is, comes all the way from England with a good, good up and down sound. Very hard hitting, very soft. They can be whatever they want to be. 
Number two is San Antonio, Better Place. If you love Three Years Grace, if you love Stain, this is the band for you. And number one, Ghost with Cerise. This is, the, this is a Grammy Award winning song, best metal performance. This band hails all the way from Sweden with a different stage image. A breath of fresh air upon music. Now if you want to catch DJs like me, you have to go to klbc.org or kcty.org. And if you want to see us and hear us at the same time, you go to twitch.tv slash KLBC radio or slash KCTY radio. We are the city, we are KLBC, and I am DJ Drake, and I am out of here. Thank you for that, Brett. Up next, Noah reviews the ups and downs of the 2015 men's and women's basketball season. Hi, this is Noah Russell. Welcome to the first INU Sports Report for the spring 2016 semester where we will recap both the men and women's basketball season. Sophomore Chris Camper led the men's team with 24 points per game, shooting 33% from the three-point line. Freshman Bremen Richard was the second on the team with 12 points, shooting 34% from behind the arc. The men went 6-2 in conference play and had an overall record of 15-12, failing to make the playoffs. On the other side of the coin, the LBCC women finished with a 7-1 conference record, 23-5 overall, and made it to the first round of the Southern California Regional Playoffs, completing another successful season for head coach Michael Anderson. Sophomore Lupe Cruz led the team with 9.6 points per game, followed by freshman Paris Lucci and Supavi Sang, who averaged both 8.5 points per game, leaving high expectations for next year's team. This has been Noah Russell with your INU Sports, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Noah. Next, we bring it over to Gwen Gregory with a list of some of the most rocking concerts coming in the LA County area. These are some of the shows you are not going to want to miss. Hi, I'm Gwen Gregory with your Concert Buzz, here to showcase a list of this spring and summer's hottest 2016 shows. Guitarist and Pink Floyd member David Gilmour is playing at the Hollywood Bowl on March 24th, 25th, and at the Fabulous Forum on March 27th. You can catch English heavy metal band Iron Maiden also rocking the forum during their Book of Souls World Tour April 15th and 16th. If you like blues, you need to see American blues rock singer and songwriter Joe Bonamassa at the Long Beach Convention Center. Bonamassa opened for B.B. King when he was only 12 years old. In the past 13 years, he has put out 15 solo albums, 11 of which have reached number one on the Billboard Blues charts. His latest release, Blues of Desperation, will be available April 25, 2016. Check out his show on April 23rd at the Terrace Theater right here in Long Beach. The Who Hits 50, concert postponed from last year, will be at the Anaheim Honda Center on May 22nd. The Cure is coming back to the Hollywood Bowl on May 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. I saw The Cure at the Bowl a few years ago. It was a great show. I'm really excited about this one. Check the following shows this summer at the Irvine Meadows Amphitheater. Slightly Stupid will be playing on June 25th, followed by Weezer and Panic at the Disco, August 6th. Wrapping up the summer shows at the Amphitheater will be Dave Matthews Band, who will be back to jam on August 27th. Coldplay is at the Rose Bowl, August 20th and 21st. And finally, one of my favorite bands of all time, Black Sabbath. They'll hit the end of summer at the Hollywood Bowl on September 19th. And there it is, a list of some of the best concerts coming to LA and Orange County. Be sure to check out the lineup for the Pacific Amphitheater Summer Concert Series in Costa Mesa during the OC Fair. I'm Gwen Gregory, keep rocking. We sat down with director Greg Mortensen and talked about the theater program's most recent production, The Great White Hope. If you love theater as much as we do, make sure to catch this interview. Hello, my name is Don Williams. And sitting with me right now here on this stage is Greg Mortensen. And he is one of the directors and an instructor in a rather well-renowned theater department here at Long Beach City College. Greg, how are you? Well, I'm flattered, thank you. I'm, I'm doing well considering we're in the middle of Tech Week. And for those who don't know a Tech Week, it's, um, it's always the launching of a new ship. So there's a... There's indication of how I'm doing. You're launching a new ship. Yeah. Does this new ship have a name? Yes, it does. It's called The Great White Hope. And it's uh, based on the real life story of Jack Johnson, first African-American, quote, black heavyweight champion of the world. And it's, um, it's divisive, it's edgy, it's entertaining, and it's uh, 
very, very, very hard to do. But we've got some terrific actors, and they're they're doing it. So, well, this is this is a remake of the old uh, The Great White Hope, the one that uh, originally back in the '70s had. Uh, James Earl, Vader, Jones. James Earl Jones. Right. Uh, this is the same script, only it's slightly adapted. Uh, the author, Howard Sackler, wrote both the Broadway play and the film, which is rather nice. So we edited this to match a lot of the film. Uh, modern audiences are, are very hard to get them to sit through three acts. So we did it more like the film. And it's lean and mean, and it's, uh, if I humbly say, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Well, you have a reputation for producing edgy plays. Yes, I do. And for what I'm told, and for the one that I've seen, you are very good at it. Thank you. What is it that you are bringing this time to the stage with The Great White Hope? More than one thing, but I'd say the main thing is awareness. Awareness that uh, these problems aren't current. They come from uh, 100 years ago and they're linked. So the current implies, well, this is the problem of the day. Well, this day has been going on over a century. And as I said in the director's notes, you can read uh, when you see the play. Yes. But I'll just encapsulate. Uh, racism, diversity is a hot button issue uh, after we deal with terrorism or politics. But with our country, it's always about ethnicity and who's offending who, who's killing who, who's, who's not doing for the other. And quite frankly, this play addresses it head on. And it's, uh, it's an awareness, it's a light bulb, and it's not new. Well, let me ask you, without giving away too much sure. of the play, can you give us a very light plot line? Certainly. Uh, Jack Jefferson, the character based on Jack Johnson, uh, is, uh, it begins with him going for that big trophy belt, the world heavyweight champ. He achieves this and uh, does it with the help and company of a white woman. Now, in 1916, mm. there were still a number of states that said, no, no, no. Yeah. And he announces that he's going to marry her. And so you can imagine what drama this creates, what uh, turmoil he embraces. He, he just walks into the, the storm head on. Sounds like a very strong personality and strong-hearted man. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Very much so. And pays for it pays for it by the codes, the mores, the social attitudes of the time. And my question is, as always as director, is, is, and I quote Shakespeare saying, we must hold the mirror up to nature with entertainment. There's part of ourselves, and we have to look at it. And those issues haven't changed. Well, it's said that art imitates life, mm -hmm. but in this particular case, I think we had to reverse that life is now following the art of that particular period. Would that be a fair statement? Well, I'll go even further. I'll say they're not mutually exclusive. I think they work hand in hand. That often art is life, and it's how we interpret it that we get the message. Okay. You are an instructor in the theater department. Actually, I'm a full-time theater professor is the title. So um, I started out as an instructor and then gained full status and tenured and all that stuff, but uh, we are also practitioners of the art. We also work in the outside industry, which is good. So one leg in education, one leg in the profession. So you bring a real practicality to what it is that you teach. I prefer to do it, as, as you guys have been taught by, by Mr. Hirsch, uh, it, it's good to maintain both. And if you're gonna learn, learn from those that do. Now, one of the things that I know for a fact you do in class, you bring a very much realism to what it is that you do, what it is and how you instruct. Sure. And the Thank only, you. well, I believe that you do an excellent job. Thank you. Uh, that comes from having a history. That comes from you okay. being able to come from one area into another and then mature into that, absorb that, and then step into the next. One would hope. Where does yours come from? Uh, experience. Uh, I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to, to be able to try and, and get in certain situations, that'd be the educational or professional, where uh, I went, I don't know what these people are doing, but they're willing to show me. And they did, and, and I was, uh, best advice I ever got was just be a sponge, go soak it up, and, and don't go in like you know everything. I, I went in knowing nothing, 
and was lucky enough to learn from some incredible, incredible people. So I, I credit that. I would say that that is the motto of some of the best instructors, at least that I have had here at LBCC. Well, that's good to know. Well, let me add that, uh, to that rather, and that is, I like to instruct, I, I don't like the word teach, I think we all teach ourselves. If I can instruct you in a particular way and you embrace the tools, great. Well, I'll meet you halfway. But what I, I love about it is, is that it's practical, it's hands-on. Let's discover this and make it work. Just as, and, and I try to, to address students the way I like to uh, be addressed when I was a student. I, I just enjoy that sort of connection. It helps. It's, uh, it's not from you know, lessons from Mount Olympus. I mean, that, that gets you nowhere. That would be the like 1920s style <laughs> teaching. Right, you know, with the robe and the mortarboard. And yes, and uh, I Mr. remember Chips or something. the 16 inch ruler also. I right, remember right. that. I, I had enough of those with the nuns. Yeah. So. Oh, wow, yes. Then oh, you oh. are experienced. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sister Mary Abuse was her nickname. Yes, no, know. that was their actual name, yeah, I right. believe. <laughs> uh, when you bring your thing to the class, what would you suggest other students or those that may be interested maybe in going into theater? What would you suggest that they bring to your classes or bring to the theater classes? A genuine sense of curiosity. Curiosity, be curious, ask, dive in, uh, and, and recognize how valuable imagination is. Everything we eat, wear, listen to, drive, it was imagined by somebody somehow and, and we benefited from it so we need storytellers we need we need to see life as an entertaining slice I, I love it I love drama I love tragedy I love comedy I love farce any of the types and genres uh, bring it that's what we need limericks limericks are good <laughs> body limericks are better <laughs> can I tell you uh, then for the outside world who's looking at this particular piece right now. Right, The Great White Hope. The Great White Hope. Um, you suggest that they also bring an open mind to this, to your interpretation or I your so. vision of this? I hope so. I heard a quote many years ago, and I wish I could remember who said it exactly, but it goes something like this. Uh, a mind is like a parachute. It only works real well when it's wide open. That's that's deep. That's very deep. Well, <laughs> I thank you. <laughs> parachute, huh? Parachute. <laughs> well, you know what an unopened parachute does. Yeah. It, it gets you to Earth a lot faster, but the end isn't so good. Painful. Yeah. In any case, I am Don Williams here on IE News. The gentleman with me here is Greg Mortensen, right? Indeed. And we'd like to thank you for your time. And Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate the time, and, and please come see. Oh, you know I have to now. Oh, boy. I am curious. Good. Bring it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that sounds like it's going to be an amazing production. Thanks, Don. The Viking News delivers a new look. The print edition of the college's paper, which has been displaying students' work since 1927, has been redesigned. We first spoke with journalism advisor Pat McKean about the skills that students develop when working in the newsroom. We try to teach uh, teamwork, uh, getting along with people, uh, meeting a deadline, uh, fair and balanced coverage of events, critical thinking, a little bit of math mixed in, certainly public speaking, uh, a lot of writing and reading. We also teach uh, video work, uh, photography, photojournalism, page design and layout, uh, meeting uh, standards of accuracy and fairness and balance, uh, and getting a job done on time all skills that will help for any major. Critical thinking and deadlines. Two most important facts of any education class. Very good. I sat down earlier with two of the Viking News editors to discuss the paper's redesign and their coverage goals for this semester. And the tradition continues. We're sitting here today with Viking News co-editor-in-chief Denise Jones and chief copy editor Susan Yusuf. How are you today, ladies? Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. So please tell us, Denise, what stories you are working on for the next edition and what major stories uh, the Viking plans on covering this semester? Uh, well, this semester the Viking um, is kind of focusing on student success. So we've already had a profile story that we've run on our online, on the website of Mayor Robert Garcia. Mm -hmm. We have um, 
City Councilwoman Myra Miravilla, who was just elected to Hawaiian Garden City Council. We we're doing profile story on her. Um, and we're just focusing on sex successful Long Beach City College alumni. Um, students who come here to learn the craft or get a career and then they go out and they work on it and become successful in it. And then Susan, tell us what it is to be a copy editor and what do you appreciate most about working on the paper? For me being the chief copy editor, it's more about making sure that the stories that we put out are factual, timely, and correct. And that's very, very important in this time and day. When it comes to what I want to do with the paper, it's important for me for students to know about public safety and everything like that. And then Denise, what are your goals for the paper? Um, I would like to see the newspaper function sort of as an actual newspaper where we would get more input from business class students and business and marketing majors. They could focus on advertising for the businesses around us, increase the readership and the awareness of things that we have going on in campus and going on just with students and student lives and different things because just we're students here on campus, but our life does not end here on campus. There thing, everybody has a life outside of campus. Right. So just focusing on that part of it as well. Okay. And then what can students find online that they don't typically find in the paper? Online, we publish everything online first. And then the best stories go in print. So you can find just about all, all of our stories are online. Uh, we would like to increase the online readership as well. Um, this is the change with the new design, redesign of the Viking is to become more media driven and more image heavy um, as society is more with social media and things are more into images and that's what our new design was about. As for the online design and everything, we also have the expanded stories, you know, because on paper there's only so much space so there's a lot of expansions on different stories that we have done different and more lengthy articles and everything like that are on the online version also when you go on your phone it's a mobile version which is very cool because that's not awesome. a lot of publications have that in on the college level so that's awesome that's another thing that we have so it's easily offer. accessed by students. Mm -hmm. yes. It's yes. a stu it's student run newspaper. The students are interviewing, they're contacting people. Um, not everyone is on campus that they're contacting. They're writing stories, writing leads, and learning what it takes to produce stories for a newspaper. Denise, you are going to see the first lady. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about this. How has this come about? Um, well, it was a January board meeting um, that I attended with during winter session with news with the news writing class and uh, President Oakley mentioned that he had an event coming up in March with the first lady. So our advisor, um, I guess, contacted him and suggested uh, some journalists accompany him because the the thing it's the Long Beach Promise. So um, they approved it and I was selected to go. Uh, company President Oakley to Washington DC to meet Michelle Obama. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm we so we excited. also have the JACC coming up next oh. week. Yes. That's it's the whole entire state of California. You know, it's a big conference and we're gonna have a really good time. Yeah, That's it's awesome. the Journalism Association of Community Colleges. So it's um, in November, we had the Southern California, and we won 14 awards. Oh, congratulations. Our city magazine won awards, and our newspaper won awards. So now this is the state we're competing against other community colleges across the state now. Yep. How does it feel knowing that your student newspaper is one of the best among all of the newspapers that are being run throughout the state? It's a point of pride. It's I know that I had. very, yeah. yeah, it's very, awesome to have a hand in it. It yeah. gives you a lot of clout and just, it makes you want to come. Yeah. It makes you want to come to school, yeah. you know? Especially because I don't feel like my fellow, you know, journalists, I, I feel like they're my friends. 
rather than just colleagues. You know, I feel like, and it's the same with the um, magazine. You know, it's not just we're doing articles. It's not just one of my classmates. We're friends. You know, we we're in this. You yeah. know, we're all trying to cultivate, create something, and we're proud of our work. And we want everyone to do good writing. And that's something that I think is really important. Yes, I agree. If you uh, really. were to come by on a Wednesday when it's deadline week, you'd see people scrambling everywhere. We're mm -hmm. talking back and forth. We're at back and forth from the board, checking off stories, checking off pages as they come in. Sometimes we have stories we're down to the deadline that we are confirming information for. We have um, the death of a student. Um, a student was murdered last year, and the her the person accused of the crime mm -hmm. is just going through trial right now, preliminary. So we're covering that. We have a, a student at the Long Beach Courthouse covering the trial. Tomorrow night, there's going to be um, a celebration of life for this student at a, a store. We're covering that. I mean, just following up with all the different things, and that's just something that we picked up at the last minute when we saw our advisor saw in the press telegram that a Long Beach City College student was murdered and her, the trial for a murder was coming up and we just jumped on it and covered it. Right. So I see here you have a couple of the editions that you've, um, I'm not sure if both of you have ran both of the, through these, but there are a few that you have. You yes, can. this was our first edition for this semester uh -huh. under the new format. Um, this is our first like edition it. was in color. Um, quarter, Beautiful. We shortened the newspaper. We went from 17 inches down to 13 and 5. Okay. So it's more of like a tabloid, um, right. LA Weekly, OC Weekly type feel. And it's uh, several pages in our center spread. It's always covering something exciting that's happening on campus. And then we now have our back cover okay. that is sports related. So this is our sports cover. And this is where we focus on all our sports activities and things that are going on because we have some exciting different sports and we have some athletes that are going, to, we have athletes that are being signed at some amazing, some great colleges. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of guys at USC, um, different guys signing all over. So I mean, just to cover and kind of highlight the sports and the athletes and the things that they do as well mm -hmm. as all the news and everything else that we do in the newspaper, it was just, it was just kind of a, kind of different, kind of new. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it was interesting and was new. It was fun to do the layout and design last semester. And then this is our first black and white issue this okay. semester. Okay. Yeah, because we do color and then black, black and, and white. Yeah, so we yes. do so you every other. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And this one was the inaugural. This is what when we first, this was what our first revised paper mm, looked like. This was okay. the first edition right here, our last paper of the last semester. And it took us a lot to reformat and get everything done down to the wire. Yeah. We had to push the publication date back, but with the co-editors we had at the time, we, we got it done. And it was, it, was a, it was a fun and very enriching experience to be a part of the redesign. Absolutely. That's amazing. Do you have your questions ready, Denise, for Miss Obama? Oh, I have a lot of questions for Miss Obama. Oh, I have a lot of questions. Yes, 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 I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, they're focusing on um, the Long Beach Promise and the uh, co the College Promise and free college tuition. So I have a lot of questions well, concerning that, and then just questions as, as being first lady. Just how that experience was yeah. for her. Your you know, teacher. just yeah, mm -hmm. yes, very much so. Is how just how do you wrap your mind around just all the responsibilities being first lady of the U.S. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. I'm Sharice Powell here at IE News. Stick around, we'll have more IE News after this commercial break. Long Beach City College radio and television program with state of the art equipment, learn directing, television studio functions, and more. All in our state of the art full HD radio and television studio at Long Beach City College. Don't miss out, enroll today at www.lbcc.edu. We have a lot of opportunities here at Long Beach City College. If you are interested in becoming a member of our news team and want to produce great television, we invite you to please call our office at 562-938-4892. Well, that does it. For iNews, I'm Noah Russell. And I'm Sharice Appel. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on another edition of IE News.